Last time we talked about the Colonial Pipeline that was shut down over the weekend. And so now many of you have come to realize the shortages. It was funny too, because when I was at the hospital and I saw the article posted, um, I think it was like Friday going into Saturday because the issue happened Friday night and then somebody posted it. I caught the, I caught the post and then I started telling everybody at work. I was like, I was at the hospital that night because I, I, I only work Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the hospital. And so I told people, I was like, you better get your gas. And they're like, why? And then I showed them, I was like, look, there's been, a, there's been an attack on the pipeline. 45% of all the gas that is basically supplied to uh, the eastern half of the country basically no longer exists. And they're not quite sure when it's going to come online. They're saying maybe in the week. But then now this is a new pipeline, right? Michigan orders closure of pipeline and escalating dispute with Canada. It says, while the government says the line is a ticking time bomb it says the company says the line five has never experienced a leak and so this is a pipeline that runs from the u.s to canada it's supplied by companies like for example enbridge enbridge is the company that supplies this pipeline and so that's why more than likely on a day where the market is down 500 oil i believe for the most part as the exxon mobil and companies like for example enbridge are positive and oil is going to move higher overall i think i think it hit a, a high uh 67 close to it so we're, i'm waiting for that breakout right this is basically looks like 68 for the most part we're looking at what looks like a top a top from all the way back in 19 and so once we see a break above 67 68 oil will trade much higher so we can see oil basically recover to where it was back where oil was a hundred dollars a barrel and that's basically what i'm betting for in a in a economy where uh, commodities are being hit money is basically being thrown into uh, the banking system not, not not yet quite making its way into the actual system for the public right so we're seeing a lot of uh, money creation via digits on a screen uh, but not it's not yet hit uh, it's not yet hit the basically the average individual right the average individual starts to make money once uh, wages start to rise and that's when you really start to see inflation but when you look at stuff for example like this this is artificial inflation right you're you're constricting and you're bottlenecking the supply strain and so it's not that we don't have oil right it's not that we don't have access to to bringing in oil into the country and then turning that oil into gas it's it's, it's artificially being choked out right like with many other companies that are seeing the inability to be able to hire people because of unemployment, right? Unemployment is paying more. It's paying, you know, depending upon the area, it's paying around between like 16 and $20 an hour. And so, you know, in different parts of the country, that's a good salary. I mean, if you're living out, for example, where my family is in Pennsylvania, $20, not so bad. The average cost of buying a home or renting an apartment, it's not that high by comparison, for example, like if you're living in places like where I'm at, where I live in Manhattan, or for someone who's living in California, $20, not really going to cut it. And so you might not necessarily see the shortages there. But in areas, for example, I have a harder time finding um, people who want to work as a home health aide, right? Because that's typically that's what I supply on uh, part of part of my business is that I supply people with home health aides. So typically pay $15, $16 an hour to keep costs low so that people are more encouraged to utilize the service. And I make visits for free. But when people can just say, I don't want to work because I'm afraid of catching the, I'm afraid of catching a cold, then individuals don't come to work and the government basically pays them a salary to stay home and do whatever they want. And so employers are having a hard time basically filling positions. And so that's why, you know, companies like McDonald's can say McDonald's franchise believing hiring challenges on unemployment benefits and say an inflationary time bomb will force them to hike big mac prices right and so it's artificial right it's it's in, basically what they're referring to is that's how you end up with causing inflation because you bottleneck a supply right you bottleneck supply you bottleneck the amount of chicken that can be produced you bottleneck you bottleneck wheat that can be produced be produced you bottleneck oil prices which then leads to shipping costs right because everything you know has to be shipped around the country and all these big different trucks and so those prices go up and so the supplier says well my cost for shipping to you has increased so they charge you money so then you say well i can't afford to eat all of this cost so now i have to pass that on to the 
to the customer. And then on top of that, the government is bottlenecking employees. So now I have to pay a higher wage. And so what McDonald's is basically saying is that prices have to rise. And then eventually what happens is what's, what's, what's happening um, in places where the government says, well, you can't charge more for gas, right? Now in a free economy, you would, you would raise prices. Now that's a, and that's basically to stem people from hoarding, which is what we're seeing. There were numerous pictures I've seen on uh, on Twitter where people are rolling up with like multiple gas tanks, et cetera. There's some dumb people um, that are, you know, coming in with these huge, like mini, mini tankers. And they're basically hoarding gas because there's no fluctuation in the price because the government says you can't charge more or you can't inflate the prices or what they refer to as price gouging. Of course, that would actually stop people from hoarding all of this gas. And so what happens is moving forward is eventually what you see are these long gas lines and then eventually the gas runs out. And that's what happens in a socialistic society that is steadily moving towards communism. And what you get, what you end up getting with is you end up, people start complaining prices, you know, not enough restriction. And so the government comes in, clamps down and it causes eventually people starve. And this is basically where the economy is moving, economy is moving towards. And so moving forward, you know, Joe Biden in a recent, uh, Joe Biden in a recent video, he was on TV, he was saying, you know, oh, I, I, I don't know why uh, us giving away free money would cause people not to want to work. And it's just like, what? And of course, you see in mul multiple states now where they're saying that they're not going to, uh, they're not going to accept the government from doing this because it's causing, it's causing inflation, it's causing a shortage, an artificial shortage on labor. And so in a recent, where was it? Uh, in a recent video posted by CNN, where you have restaurant, you have people, and this is in New York. And so you have restaurant industry has been one of the hardest hit. It says now restaurants are struggling to hire workers with uh, two owners using robots to help prep, even serve food. And so what happens is, is when wages, be, where wages for labor becomes too high, industries will just automate. And what it will do is it will cost job losses. When you have job losses, you then have to basically give the people who can't find jobs because this destroys jobs, right? When you when you artificially increase the what it costs for people to be able to get a job to purchase labor, in essence, right? I'm buying your labor. What does it cost me? If it costs me too much money, if I can automate, I will. And that's what these job makers, that's what these job producers are doing in, of course, the restaurant industry. And then you'll see people, why don't they just pay their staff a decent wage and provide a safe environment? And the reality is, is that individuals like this, they don't create jobs. They have no idea what it costs to run an economy. And so they're just saying, why don't you just raise the wages? And they said, well, if I raise wages, I have to raise the prices, right? And then that costs the customer to pay more. The idea is to lower wages when you have competition when you have a free market where people can move around what that does is it causes prices to start to come down because things start to become more abundant when things start to become less abundant right they naturally start to rise and that's why you see commodities like for example oil going up you see uh, price for example companies like rio which provides minerals minerals start to go up you look at for example like soybeans soybeans the cost for soybeans look at it look at the chart right that's because there's a bottlenecking, there's a supply constraint, and then now you have people who are fearful, like places where in China they're like, we're gonna buy up all the, we're gonna buy up all the soybeans, and this is typically the the stuff that is utilized in providing either grain. They'll use soybeans for feeding uh, different livestock, right? And so China is basically eating up all of the soybean, which then causes a glut, or causes a, a, a supply chain issue, right? Because of the because of the of the bug, the cough. And on top of that, you have people that are just not going to work. They have less labor. So you have more people wanting what, you know, there's only a finite amount of a lot of the stuff that they can buy. Corn has gone up. You look at, for example, steel, right? Steel prices have, have, have gone up. Despite on days like today, where the market is moving down, for the most part, steel has been moving to the upside. Now, a lot of this is artificial because of government actions, because of government basically manipulating the free market. And so you have the article here. We're going to take a look at what CNN had to say for those who were looking for employment. And this is basically from multiple places where they're having this exact same issue. I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to disappear for a second. You guys can enjoy this video.
I'm hearing from restaurant owners that they are shocked and concerned that during a time when business should be thriving, they're having a hard time finding workers to do business. This is just the latest twist in what has been a difficult year for the restaurant industry. We have a a war of, of survival, a new war of survival. Yeah. Philippe Massoud never thought he'd be facing a shortage of restaurant workers in the middle of the pandemic. We have no staff to open for lunch at all. Dining in the U.S. is at about 90 percent of pre-pandemic levels, according to Open Table, and nearly 8.5 million Americans are still out of work. But Masood can't find anyone to fill his 15 open positions, from manager to dishwasher. Normally you get at least 30, 40, 50 people, 60 people. We only had three people respond to our ads, and none of them showed up. In January, 7% of restaurant operators named recruitment and retention as their top challenge. By April, that number was 57%. One issue, some employees have left the restaurant industry for good, like John Jasinecki, who quit in January after 16 years as a server and bartender. I had intended on being a lifer. But with unstable pay and after contracting COVID-19, he knew it was time for a career change. COVID was very stressful. Yelling at people to put on their masks is not what I want to do every day. Jasinecki now works in maintenance for several high-rises in downtown Denver. It's a different world working 9 to 5 as opposed to 5 to 2. Restaurants in Miami have been at 100 percent indoor capacity since October of last year. But Carlos Gazitua says he doesn't have enough staff to open his dining room. Florida is a bellwether state. Uh, we are, we've been open a lot longer than many states in the United States. So. This is a coming to the theater near you. And he says it's only getting worse. He can't fill more than 30 percent of his positions, even after raising wages. He says the $300 weekly expanded unemployment benefit is stopping people from coming back to work. People should keep the unemployment benefits if they go to work now and they commit to working to the end of the year. The expanded unemployment benefits don't expire until early September. We're supposed to go hire people to retain them, but at the same time you're paying unemployment, it creates a conflict of interest, so to speak. Right, so for four months, what is the plan? Lose more money and do what we can to stay open. Now, the two uh, restaurant owners that you just heard from there told me they have done something new for the first time in their entire careers. They've actually purchased robots to work in their restaurants because they can't find enough humans to do the job. So in New York, one of the robots is going to be making salads. In Miami, that robot is going to be serving and busting tables. But Jim and Poppy, this idea that robots will be serving us our meals in restaurants once was a distant idea in the future. But in the reality, it's here and it's now if this labor shortage doesn't get worked out. Wow. Jim and Poppy. Wow. And that's basically going to be the future for those who want to go the route of remaining unemployed. What's going to happen moving forward is that employers are just going to utilize, as they said, robots or they're going to use, you know, AI. And this is basically the future. And it's a contrived Future. It is a future that is being manipulated. This is this is the goal. And that's why I said this. The, you know, everything that is happening, it's happening incrementally. They're pushing individuals. They're pushing the country towards their goal, which is of more automation, AI, which puts individuals out of work, which then subsequently puts more individuals on um, unemployment. And then eventually, they say, well, you know, the pandemic isn't over, and so what we need to do is we need to give people a perpetual UBI, and then of course that they'll eventually move in with some sort of a digital dollar, some sort of a wallet, which is why you see cryptocurrency being so very popular, especially among the young people, because they, they don't realize what's going on. To them, they're like, oh, crypto is the new gold. Meanwhile, crypto, the only reason crypto rises is because more people end up putting money into the pot. It's kind of like when I worked, used to work at a nursing home and it was like they had this thing called Suzu and it was basically utilized. So maybe somebody had a business or someone had a particular bill to pay. So everybody would pool their resource and then someone would extract wealth from them and then basically pay that back. 
And it's basically just like your normal period scheme. The people at the top are the ones who make money. The ones at the bottom are the ones that end up losing out when everybody starts to extract wealth from basically from the pool. The only reason, it's not like a business. A business goes out, it retains customers, it gets more subscriptions, it sells more product, right? If I sell more, for example, I sell a bunch of these uh, Smuckers, you know, breakfast syrups, I, and more people like my, my, more people like my product, so I sell more of it, I start to earn more money, and that naturally shows that my business, of course, is doing well. When people buy crypto, this it doesn't produce anything, right? It doesn't make anything. It doesn't pay a dividend. It doesn't produce a product. It doesn't offer a service. All that it does is people are just dumping money into this system. And of course, as a result, it, it starts to rise because people then will start to sell it for more money or they'll just say, I'm going to hold on to it and I'm going to sell it at a huge, huge profit. When that leaves the system, you're hoping that the next person that comes in line you're going to be able to sell it to for more money and this is just to get young people used to the used to a having a sort of uh, uh a wallet a sort of a digital currency right? this is basically the point to get people used to this. this is why you see it's so very popular on on many of these companies and it's because the government is basically trying to push people out of work get them on some sort of ubi throw in a sort of uh, digital dollar or some sort of fed federal coin federal wallet that they're going to offer people and they're going to be able to control how you utilize your funds and if you utilize funds in a way that they don't like well then maybe you won't have those funds if you post something on social media that they don't like well then maybe you want maybe you'll have less funds that are available to you and so this is way a uh, more of a way where they're able to track a lot of their a lot of their money and people say well they do that already with debit cards and with uh, credit cards, etc. The difference is, is if I go to the bank and I take out a hundred bucks, the government has absolutely no idea where that money goes, right? Because that it's cash. It's the most uh, way that you are in essence uh, are protected. If you want to be anonymous, you utilize cash, which is why gold in the form of gold coins was so very popular during economic crises, which is why the government seized them back in the days so that they could actually back the dollar via gold and that they might do something differently not in the way of gold, but maybe with, for example, crypto in some way, shape or form, which is why we're seeing different people being put into different positions of authority over what's going to happen in terms of what's going on in this space when it's related to cryptocurrencies. But this is basically the future, the incremental steps, which is why they need to get individuals to take the poke because it just sets the mind up, right? It sets the mind up, which is why they have such a hard time now doing that because a lot of people really aren't all that interested and we're going to talk a little bit about that in the next video. I'll catch you next time. Of course, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.